Hello, I'm Rosie and in this video I'm going to explore how Experience Builder, one of the newest additions to the Esri platform, can help you streamline complex multi-app workflows in one unified interface. Many harness the power of our integrated platform to collect, analyse and share their data. Tools like Web Apps and Survey123 allow informed and detailed data capture in the field. These feeds of information drive situation awareness. ArcGIS dashboards is often used for reporting and analysing events real time, or a more narrative driven briefing tool can be created with ArcGIS story maps. I'd recommend checking out some of the other videos in this box set to explore the apps individually. You'll see each app has unique functionality which when used together solve complex spatial problems. So where does Experience Builder come in? Experience Builder enables us to now bring the unique elements of different apps into one location, creating easy to use and effective workflows. The widget based configuration allows us to build a dynamic, flexible and integrated user experience. Using both spatial and non-spatial 2D and 3D data feeds, we are able to access information at our desk or in the field thanks to the mobile adaptive design. So let's take a look at a scenario I've put together to demonstrate one way that Experience Builder can be used. In the scenario, a tourism officer has been asked to help people virtually explore areas in the UK to help inspire future visits. To do this, we need three key components, the first being detailed visualisations that show the locations of points of interest with their associated information. Secondly, we need a medium for people who have already visited the area to submit photos and comments about when and where they visited. And finally, we need an ability to communicate key messages, such as the latest news or event updates in the area. So let's take a look at how this can be achieved in an app. To begin with, we'll look at the finished app and then we'll dig into how this has been built afterwards. So the first thing to note is this one page design. Everything is in the same interface. Down the side, you'll see all the different regions for the UK national parks in England. The buttons are linked to the map by the UK national parks data layer that you can find in the Living Atlas, Esri's collection of open data. So as such, when I select a region, all the other elements dynamically update to zoom to those locations. As you can see, we're now in the new forest and the 3D scene has changed as have the different images that are associated with the points on the map. So if we go back to the Lake District, we can see some features on the map already. So zooming in, we can start to explore the area and what those features are. Now, as you notice, when I zoom, not only does the 2D map update, but so does the 3D. And if I go in further, you can see the value of this. You can start to see the more detail on this side of the, of the map. But also if we go in and start to explore this area, you can start to see what the visualization of the terrain would be, and also the view that you may get from that location. But to enhance that view, you can attach images to those points as well. So this then feeds into the information bar at the bottom. And what we have here is an image of the associated location and also the comments of the person who submitted that image. The nice functionality of the map viewer in Experience Builder is the fact that you can turn on different tools within the window. So here we've got the search bar enabled and if I go in, I can search for points of interest that the user may have heard of, for instance, theatre by the lake. So zooming in, we can change the extent of the map to pick out where those locations are. And as you can see, a point has been submitted here already. Zooming in, we can see that the theatre is here and the point is actually showing the view just down from where the theatre is. Now you can see in the background here is OpenStreetMap, which shows trails and other attractions in the area. And it might be that when visiting this area, you want to do a short walk. So the measure tool is useful to be able to see how far that walk would be. And so you can simply turn it on, start clicking on the map, 
And as you can see in kilometers, it's starting to tell me how far I'm going. With that in mind, you might want to view what you're seeing in 3D to see what the terrain is. So here we can see the 3D map, we can see the points, and we can also see overlying it the open street map to show where the footpaths go. But you can quickly turn these off using the layer menu here. So we can turn off the photos and we can turn off open street map to start to see the more realistic view through the imagery. Zooming in, you can even see the boats near where the ducks were fed. Now the second key component was to interact with the user to get photos and comments about recent visits. So a survey123 widget has been added to allow users to submit their own photos to the map. Now pretending that I was a previous tourist, I can zoom into a location that I have been to before. And as you can see, there are no points of interest already submitted here. So I can add in my own survey now to submit some photos. I can go in and open the widget. And as you can see, it pops up within the application. There's no need to switch tabs or switch devices. In this window, I can go in and find my location and zoom to that using the search tool. When there, you can zoom in further and start to actually locate the specific location of where you were. So I was here eating some gingerbread. Click the map to plot the pin and then I can go in to when I was last visiting. I can also submit the image by URL. So this means that any images that may be already on Facebook or Google can be added with ease. And I can add a comment to tell people what the highlight was of the visit. When done, you can hit share the adventure and take note of this figure here. Everything is interlinked with the same feature layer. So as you can see, once the survey has been submitted, it almost instantly updates the count of the number of photos on the map, but also the pin on the map. And if I turn on photos on the 3D scene, you can see that it appears there too, as does the image along the bottom here. So this feeds into the third key component that our tourism officer needed in their app the ability to communicate key messages and up-to-date feeds of information. So the count that we've already seen dynamically update is actually an ArcGIS dashboard indicator, which I've embedded to give live statistics from the map. It's nested amongst text for context, and I've embedded links to social media feeds such as Twitter, so that it's easy to encourage the users to use the app. So now that we've seen the app and the number of different components that can be included, let's take a look at how easy it is to put together. So here we have the builder and in here you can see the different widgets and the elements that you can start to configure. You can also see that you have different views. So if I scroll across and put it into live view, you can start to use the application like you would if you had it published. This enables you to see in real time how the application will look and feel when it is live. And it also means that you can go into the mobile configuration to see how it would look on different devices, changing the resolution as you go through. So how do you get started? You can access Experience Builder from the product page, sign in with your ArcGIS Online account, and you will load the landing page of the builder. From here, you can create a new experience either from a template or from a blank page. In the interest of time, I'm going to continue with one I've already begun and show you how to add some of the key elements. So in the design page, first take note of the buttons down the side. Here you can set the theme and define the data sources. So I've already pointed the experience at my map in my account and this then pulls through the data layers in the map. So here we have the living atlas layers as well as the data layer that the survey feeds into. Within this window you can also add pages. This design is a blank full screen page but you can add other templates or even scrolling pages if you want more of a website feel. 
Now we are ready to start building the page, but before adding other widgets, I'd recommend setting the layout. I have already added a couple of rows and a column, which define how the widgets will line up. And I've also added a header bar at the top to differentiate the title and the logo from the rest of the app. Now you can start dragging the widgets where you need them. The two map views are already in place and pointed to the 2D and 3D maps, but if more data is needed, we can bring it in from our account here. Under settings, we can toggle the maps tools that we need. So here we can turn off search and turn on the measure tool. As you saw in the final app, these two views are linked and you achieve this by setting the actions. So you add a trigger so that when each extent changes, the target map also updates. Turning on Live View, we can get a feel for how the components perform without having to launch the full app. So here we can test how those triggers will work with the two views. So with the map set up, we can add the survey. This could be a fully embedded survey, or I added it within the widget controller so that it was less dominant. Under the configuration option, you can change the look and feel of the button and define the survey you want to use, either building up from scratch or I'll select an existing one, which I can then edit without having to go into the Survey123 app. You can adjust the scale and set the name of the survey before resizing the widget so it's easy to notice and use. To display the information being added to the map, I created a list, adjusting the size to the right width and selecting a template to get started. Choosing the data layer I want to link enables me to have dynamic content. So here I select my survey and adjust the widget layout to the key attributes display. This isn't just text, but also the images too. Finally, we can see here the text that sandwiches the dashboard element that I've added using the embed widget. In a similar process, we can add the text at the bottom and use the tools to set the font colour to be in line with the rest of the theme. Under style, you can adjust the heights of widgets to make sure they all fit in the spaces. So similar to adding the dashboard elements, I can use the embed widget to include the Twitter link, but this time with HTML code rather than a URL. And there we have it, an app that is visual and informative to help people explore the national parks. We have seen the six key stages of building up an experience from choosing a template, theme, and data source to adding and linking widgets before refining the layout and publishing for others to view. So here are a few other examples to inspire you and help you see how Experience Builder could be used. So here we have a factual scrolling page about the lunar landing. Or here is a tourist guide for Washington DC. It could be that Experience Builder is used to publicize events such as festivals across the country. Or here we have an informative briefing tool, in this case about the current pandemic, with multiple pages to enable you to show different views of that data. So all that I've shown today has been out of the box, widget driven configuration with no need for coding. We have built up a flexible, dynamic and integrated user experience that unified apps, including Survey123 and ArcGIS dashboards to streamline what would have been a multi app workflow. Different data sources, both 3D and 2D, were used to give detailed and informed visualizations in a responsive application available on the web or mobile device. 
If you'd like to push the boundaries of Experience Builder's capabilities, I'd recommend that you take a look at Ben Hammersley's video, Customising and Extending Experience Builder, for more information about the Developer Edition. But on screen are some useful links to help you get started with Experience Builder today.